hello, hello. Welcome, dear traders. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another webinar. My name is Angelo, as you see on your screen. I am your host and presenter for today's webinar. Um, like always, we have a very nice content ready for you guys. As you see from the title of it, it is the Candlesticks Patterns Part 3. That means we have two more videos that we have made already on this subject. We're going to take a little brief look in the beginning of what we did see on the previous two. So just to catch up there, if you guys are watching and you haven't watched part one and two, I highly recommend watching those ones as well just to get a much better understanding of how these candlestick patterns work. We're looking at four each webinar, so we are onto our 12 ones right now. I see the chat is already going. I saw earlier from Armenia, Botswana and Somalia already registering on the chat. Alexander, right on cue. There you go, mate. Welcome. Uh, so that Sean had an incident where he won a previous giveaway and didn't receive his prize. But my moderators have uh, confirmed that already. So if you're watching, Sean, check your email. You should have a notification there regarding your prize that you won on the previous giveaway. All right, here we go. Um, UAE, United Arab Emirates. Welcome to the party. Uh, uh, Rajiv, I'm guessing you're most likely from India. I hope you are, if I'm right. Oh, or maybe even Sri Lanka. Let us know in the chat where you're watching from, guys. Uh, questions. If you have any questions, I have, as you can see, my moderators online as well, so they can answer questions that are related to the webinar and questions not related to the subject. And I'm going to be answering some questions at the end as well. So if you do have questions, stay till the end so I can answer those ones for you. Um, like always, it really helps our channel. If you do find something useful or if you like this video, please just take a second to click the like button, subscribe to our channel as well. Uh, really helps us make more videos like this to help you guys with your trading, with your education and hopefully success. If you are going to subscribe, ring the notification bell as well just to be notified for upcoming webinars. We have a whole bunch of them ready for you. I can see my Indian traders are in the house and Nestor from Mozambique. Welcome guys. Okay, so, right, more Indian traders. I see lots and lots of Indian traders watching this. We do have Hindi webinars as well. That's every second Thursday. So always on Thursdays, there's going to be my English live webinar. And then after that, the Thursday after, there is the Hindi webinar with Orville. So do tune into that if you do want to watch the Hindi ones as well. The upcoming ones for those is going to be... Um, next Thursday on the 22nd, we have uh, the best time for trading binary options with Orville in Hindi. The Thursday after that, I'm back again and we have a webinar on gold. So don't miss that one if you do like trading on commodities and understanding more about gold and why people trade gold so frequently. And then if you speak Thai or Indonesian, we have webinars in these languages on Tuesdays always. So if you're any Thai viewers out there now, uh, Tuesday, next Tuesday, we have risk management for binary options in Thai. And the Tuesday after that, on the 27th of September, we have the same webinar in Indonesian. So hope you guys can watch those. Uh, right. OK, enough of me talking. Let's jump straight into the uh, webinar now. Here is the title, Trading, uh, Trading with Candlestick Patterns Part 3. Part 3, as I said, we have two more, so do watch those if you haven't so you can understand a lot more and you'll be able to read the charts and um, maybe not even use indicators for your trading. Although I'm a big fan of both, trading with the candlesticks and, of course, with the indicators too. Right, let's move along. Okay, that was uh, something went wrong there. I'm on the wrong screen. And... What's going on here? This is still working. This is still working. Okay, there we go. What we saw on part one. Uh, part one and two, we learned how to use the hammer, the shooting star, the dodgy, and then we saw the head and shoulders patterns. On part two, we show, saw the bullish engulfing, bearish engulfing, evening star, and morning star. Very, very, very good patterns, all of them. Definitely learn them if you know, if you watch the part two and part one and two, you should be full up to date, but it is YouTube. You can always rewatch those videos if you feel the need to. Okay, awesome content. Thank you, Sky. Let's go. Today, what we're learning today, how to identify bullish harami, bearish harami. Then we're gonna look at the hanging man and my favorite name for any kind of candle pattern, bullish abandoned baby. A horrible thing to do unless we're not talking about trading, right? Don't abandon your babies, guys. Right, okay. Let's jump in straight into the action with the first one, the bullish harami. Now, this is what it looks like. It is a bullish pattern. 
and it consists of a, is, uh, a large red candle is followed by a smaller green candle, the body of which is totally contained within the first candle. So as you can see here, very, very clearly, a big red candle and then a smaller green candle, the body of which is inside of that one. So this one can basically eat this one in whole, right? That is a bullish harami. This is what it looks like. Memorize it, remember it. If you see it, you have identified a bullish pattern. And what you should expect to see is exactly this, what happens here with Verizon. First thing first, Verizon is in a downtrend. It's dropping value, clear to see. It starts from up here, starts dropping, dropping, dropping. Then something happens along here. As you can see here, there it is. The bullish Harami appears signaling to us that the market could potentially change direction and that's exactly what happens the market does change direction and it starts trending heavily upwards so perfect example of what to expect look for these kind of moments if you see a candle appear uh, and then a smaller green one you have identified a bullish harami and this means that you can go for a trade and hopefully make a good profit. If you're talking about Verizon, this is one day candles. So this means that after this pattern emerged, we had one, two, three, four, five days of market moving in an upward direction, and this would have been a nice profit. Next one, the exact opposite, the bearish Harami. It's exactly the same as before, we just flipped them around. So it's the big green candle and a small red candle as before, it's formed when a, a, a big green one is followed by a small red one, the body of which can be contained within the previous candle. No need to show it. It is very, very obvious here. This one is a bearish signal. So once you identify this, you should expect the markets to start dropping value. Verizon again, another one day candles we're looking at here. And uh, we see what we see. Verizon is trending upwards. Then we can see here very, very clearly, it is a bearish uh, Rami and the market starts reversing. A big red candle appears, followed by multiple more red candles. There's four reds followed in there, a couple of tiny little green ones, but the market does drop value. As soon as we identified it at that point, if you were to be early and your trade straights away on it, you might have been a bit worried in the beginning, but as the day continues, it starts going red, the next day another red, then it stays more or less on the same value, more red, bigger red, you should be happy, you made a decent profit. And again, this is over one day candles. So we're looking at uh, one, two, three, four, five, six days where the market at one point comes all the way down there. So again, very, very nice profits. Okay, guys, I'm not seeing questions. I'm seeing lovely roses sent over. I hope they're for me. That's lovely. And uh, guys, if you have questions, if you don't understand something, if I'm talking too fast or too slow, I don't think it's too slow, let me know. Let me know if you have any other questions. M let the moderators know as well, right? Moving along. Hanging Man. Something that is not very pleasant. Happened a lot in the Dark Ages, and it also apparently happens on our charts. So watch out for the Hanging Men. Now, this one is formed when an asset has been in an uptrend. So look out for uptrends. If you see something trending very, very high, there could be a potential Hanging Man coming on. Now, it is a bearish pattern consisting, consisting of multiple green candles followed by a small red candle with a large wick. That's what it looks like. I think this photo is very clear. We have multiple green ones. The market is trending upwards. There's a small red candle with a very large wick on this example here, so a wick or shadow. And this is a very, very bearish pattern. If you see this, then you can take a, hopefully a good trade at a good timing and make some very nice profits. The example is very clear. It stands out like a sore thumb. Uh, oh, revenge trading. Javin, very good question. I'll answer that one just after I explain this. So first thing first we see here, it's Euro USD 30 minute candles. So it's uh, Forex, short, uh, short to medium term, 30 second each candle. Strong uptrend we see here for Euro in favor of Euro. Then all of a sudden, what appears there? The last little red candle, small candle of red, large wick on the bottom, much bigger than the actual body. This is the hanging man pattern. And we see a very, very strong downward movement from this moment onwards. Okay. Okay. Well, there you have an answer, Javin, regarding uh, how to avoid uh, revenge trading. My moderators have given you an answer. You can watch a video we have about that, about money management. And I will elaborate a bit on that. Um, discipline and control, very important. Um, if you know what your daily plan is, people that have a nine to five job and you're working for a certain amount of time, you start work at a certain time, you finish work at a certain time and you get paid your salary end of the month or end of the week accordingly. 
same thing, same kind of approach we have to have to our trading. Once you sit down to trade, have it in your mind that this is not fun, this is business. This is, for some people, this is a livelihood. So if you have one hour, two hours, three hours or four available to trade, set yourself a goal before you start trading, before you have any emotions involved in trading, set a goal. I'm gonna make 20% profit today. I'm gonna to make 10% profit today. I'll use 1% of my balance per trade. So if you have $100, for example, you're doing a $1 trade. Slowly, 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 get to your target. If you succeed, you made your 10% or your 20% profit, that's it, end your trading. If you're working with small percentages like 1%, 2%, maybe even 3%, it should not trigger you. If you lose a trade and you lose 2% of your balance, you had 100, you lost two. You're not gonna be devastated. You can recover that $2. Problems occur when people are doing much bigger, much more aggressive trades. If I have $100 on my account and I just traded $50 and lost it, I will be triggered. I will be upset. I will be tempted to take another all-in big $50 trade. If I lose that one too, I'm devastated and my account is broken. We have to avoid that. Small trades, don't expose yourselves don't expose your accounts. That's my advice to Javin, but not only Javin, to everyone who has this issue. And like my moderator said, watch the webinar for money management. It will definitely give you multiple ideas on how to use money management in your advantage to eliminate the uh, revenge trading or risks, uh, overtaking too many risks. Okay. Okay, I see more questions here about Fibonacci's. We do have another webinar on that one as well, Uday. Uh, two of them actually, Fibonacci retracements and Fibonacci extensions. Uh, watch those ones for the Fibonacci's. Back to our content. As we saw here, the market does reverse after we saw the hanging man pattern. Moving along to the last one we have for today, the bullish abandoned baby. What a lovely name. This pattern signals the potential end of a downtrend and the start of the price moving higher. That's, again, we're looking at the downside now. We're looking at the bottom side of the markets, looking for bottoming out and looking for the market to reverse and move in the upward direction. So this one consists of a strong down candle, a gap between uh, the down one, then a dodgy like candle. So we need a candle with a long wicks and small body. Then we need a strong bullish candle that co follows the gap after. This is precisely what it looks like. We can see one red candle, a down candle, a gap between the next. Then we see on the bottom here with the distance, another red candle, small one, and then we see a big green candle. Once you see all three of these candles lined up this way, it is a bullish pattern and you should see the market heading straight up into the upward direction. Uh, I'm not gonna give any reward for anyone who points it out because it is absolutely obvious here where we have this, uh, ha this abandoned baby. And this is on my least favorite franchise, McDonald's, uh, dropping value. All of a sudden we see it, there is the bullish abandoned baby. Soon as this candle here is completed, well, there we go. Soon as this candle here is completed, that's when we can take a trade. And straight after that, very, very easy, a very nice strong upward movement where we can see only green. So one, two, actually no, not count that one. One, two, three, four, five, dodgy followed by a green, signals more movement upwards, this pattern here from part one, so we can see clearly an upward direction forming as soon as we found that, uh, that bullish abandoned baby. Live screen means we're gonna see some, uh, some live now. Let me just bring it over, and there we go. First one we're gonna look at is the Apple, my favorite um, mobile phone company since I switched switch to Apple. I'm never going back to Android, that's for sure. But what are we looking at here? First one in the screen here. Is this zoomed in enough or should I bring it a bit closer in? Let's see, let's see. Who can tell me what we're seeing here on this moment? The market is trending upwards, steadily climbing as we can see. Three reds downward, then there's a green and the market continues climbing upwards. What do we see here? There is a bit of a delay on the chat. So uh, hopefully you guys are writing in chat that this is a bullish abandoned baby. As we can see here, these candles here are the ones we're looking at. There's multiple, so there's one, two, three green reds. Doesn't make a difference. It's basically these three that we're gonna look at. So there's a red candle, a gap between, then there's another red followed by a bigger green, signaling the market should and did climb very, very nicely from this moment after. And then uh, following up, if we look at the peak here, what happens? 
This one, we didn't talk about it today, but if there's anyone here who watched the part one or part two, in part two, we did speak about her bearish engulfing. So this candle here is bigger than that one. It totally elapsed that one there. So this is a bearish, uh, uh, bearish uh, uh, candle, a bearish pattern here we see, a bearish engulfing. So it drops value, goes down, a little bit of a, f a pullback here with another engulfing candle here. So a big red covers totally the small green. So another bearish engulfing. Market continues dropping down. Another bearish engulfing happens here. Then there's a dodgy. We saw this one in part one, followed by a red. This is a signal the market should drop potentially further. It does drop to this one here. This is almost a dodgy, but what happens after is a green one, which is bigger than that one. So this is a bullish engulfing pattern. We have now a signal for a bullish uptrend, and it does pick up a little bit. Then at this point, if we are to put these ones side by side, it's another negative one. It's a bearish uh, uh, elapsing again. So it's a bearish pattern. This, this is just, just from us watching 16, oh, sorry, 12, 12 candlestick patterns so far, and I could trace the market from this moment all the way to the peak, all the way down to this current one now. And this is something that we have spoke about today, what's going on right now. Big red one, small green one, the body of which is totally elapsed by the previous big red one. This is a bullish harami. So if this is to be confirmed when this candle closes, then that means that we are potentially looking at a market that could be climbing. So we could see this market, this candle close, for example, so the next candle will open and we could see the market moving in an upward direction. How high? That's a bit questionable because if we do use other techniques like support and resistance, we can see here that drawing a line from there to this peak here, there are multiple touches. This is a quite strong resistance we have up here. There's a touch there, there's a touch here, a touch here. This one is more or less elapsing it. This one is almost a touch and there's more touches down here. So we can just see that there is a strong support around the 160, the 163. That's the resistance, sorry. And then on the bottom side, there is support nearby as well. If we just look at this moment there on the market, draw a line from there, we see that there's lots of touches on the current. So a couple of touches there, a couple more touches in here. There is support where we are now, and there is maybe even maybe stronger support if we look back a little bit. This peak here, for example, is interesting. We can see that peak, and it is very close to the 150. So I would say that the 150 is our support. The 165, 164 is our resistance. So if the market does make some kind of a movement, it could be, if this is to be confirmed, we could see an upward movement to here. Nice. That's this one regarding Apple. I hope you guys follow through this. The first one here was the uh, bullish abandoned baby. The market respected it. And then here we have the bullish harami where the market should hopefully respect. And we might see over the next few days Apple climbing possibly challenging this resistance at 163. Moving along to a company called Alphabet, more better known as Google. I have a couple of examples for you here. Now, looking at Google, market was climbing, comes to a point up here, and uh, what do we see? Let's zoom it in a little bit more to where I marked it here. So we have lots of greens, specifically these three greens in a row here. Okay. I'm hoping that my chat is working, guys. Oh, I was a bit delayed on that one. Okay, guys, um, where are we? Is everyone receiving this? Is everybody seeing this? I'm not sure if my chat is still working. I hope it is, because I've been moving it around a little bit. And, um, yeah, let's see. Uh, all right, all right, back to this, back to this, back to this. Um, so, up the top, this one, guys, it is a hanging man right multiple greens in a row climbing climbing then we have a red with a small body a long wick so this one there in there that's the hanging man pattern and the reaction we see from it is a very 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 strong downward movement right as soon as the hanging man appears followed by a big red and look where the market crashes all the way down to there up to this point there's not much to talk about. There's just straight reds there at this point here. This is a bearish harami again, we can say. Market drops even further. At this point here, bullish engulfing. This one is elapsed by this one, climbs up. Bit of a sideways market there. Then at this point here, another drop. Again, here, there's another one, another um, morning star. If you watched part one, here we can see the morning star pattern. So the market respects it. 
and we see the market climbing back up again. If we're going to bring it a bit more to the present, is there anything else that goes on here? Some dodgy, something lapsed there, a big gap between this is most likely after their earning report that this had this drop. And then the last one we see down here is another bearish harami. Let me just zoom in a little bit more to bring it closer to the action. Big green, smaller red. The red is engulfed by this one here. So it is a bearish harami and the market does respect it enough. It drops down. These two bullish engulfing guys. So small red, bigger green. If this candle closes, this is 30 minute candles. So if this candle closes there, it could be potentially a buy signal. So we could see the market possibly moving upwards. Um, how high? Well, there is, I would say at this point here, a decent amount of uh, resistance going on. So they could see a movement climbing up. If it breaks through that one, then we can potentially see it reach this m recent high. So that would be the direction if it follows. So realistically, it could, if this one is confirmed as a bullish pattern, we could see the market possibly making this kind of a movement and maybe hopefully hitting that line for us. Okay, I'm getting a bit nervous now about the chat. Uh, chat is working, no issue with it. Brilliant. Okay, thanks for helping me, uh, Javin. Next one, Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, not doing so well. Had a massive drop in value over the last uh, couple of uh, months, uh, down to 20,000 from a very, very high that it was sitting on for a very long time when we see where it was in 2021, end of 2021, sitting at 69,000. Looking at it now, collapsing down to 20,000. Good news is that there is strong support around the 20,000. 17 was the lowest it went. So I would say between the 17 to 25,000 is the range it's keeping itself into right now. So any cryptocurrency fans out there, um, if you bought it at a price of recent, anything between 25 to 17, you should be okay. It is going sideways in this market currently now. Now let's zoom in here and take a look at what we can see here. Let's see. Any ideas? Is it's kind of uh, yeah, it is effective for scalping. You can use it for scalping. You can use it for depends on the pattern more or less. If you're looking at a hanging man that is at the top of a trend and you might see a massive drop, then that is more like for a long term trade. But engulfings and um, some inner patterns some dodgies followed by smaller candles or bigger candles in a direction. Those ones can be used for short-term trades or for scalping trades, like for pullbacks. But um, the bigger patterns, they like morning stars, shooting stars, evening stars, bullish abandoned babies and uh, hanging mans, and especially then also head and shoulders, these ones you can use them for more like long direction trades where you open a nice trade, catch a very nice trend and cash it out with a nice big profit. So who's got me here? Dodgy candle. Where's the dodgy candle? Mm, almost. Dodge, it's almost a dodgy. Dodgy will be a bit more gray. But uh, Bitcoin, on this one here, we have a bearish harami. It is a simple one to see. Big green, small by small red. This one is definitely elapsed. So you can fit many of these candles into this big candle. And the reaction we see on the market is a strong rejection. So almost dodgy uh, there. So yeah. Kalol is right. It is almost a dodgy, but the market does respect it in the same fashion. So we had the pattern here. Market drops value. And then what happens further down? I'm going to make it easy. It is exactly the same thing. This one is a bit more uh, vivid, a bit more uh, easy to identify. Big green, smaller red. That's the body of the red that can fit in the green. And again, market does the same thing. It drops value as a result of it. So this pattern was confirmed by the market movement. A third one, another one here. This one can also maybe be stretched into a morning star because it is big green, small red, bigger red. This red would have been nicer if it was a larger red, if it was something like uh, this shape in red color. That would have been a perfect uh, morning star, um, evening star. But even without that, it is still a bearish a pattern here, a bearish harami, and the market does respect it and drop with a whole bunch of uh, red candles following. So this one, for example, answering about again to uh, if this is a candle where we can use it as a, a hedge, a hedge position or a scalping position. This one is a nice pattern. If you saw this moment here, you took the trade, you would basically keep it until you see something that contradicts. So you see red, 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 five, six days of red. Then at this point here, 
is what you can identify as a bullish uh, engulfing, bigger green followed by the follows the small red. So at this point there, you'd say, ah, okay, the downtrend is ending, so I'll sell my trade. You'd most likely sell it at that point where you bought it at this point there. Not a huge profit, but a profit nonetheless. Uh, time frames. Good question about the time frames, uh, guys. It always depends on what you're trading. If you're doing short trades or long trades, it totally depends. If you're a trader that does um, binary trading, you can definitely use that as well. You can use it for binaries, but on short-term candles, there's a lot more noise. You may see loads and loads of patterns contradicting each other. And it depends, of course, on the market's volatility as well on short candles like 30-second or 15-second candles. Um, the larger the candles, the more strong the signal, let's just say. This is the last one I have prepped for you guys here, where we can see a nice little pattern here. And um, this one, if we zoom it in, it is a questionable, a questionable hanging man. Three greens followed by a, str a strong wicked red candle. Small body, big wick. It's definitely a bullish, um, a, a bearish harami. Definitely it's a bearish harami, but you could even argue that it might even be a hanging man. And the result of which as we just zoom it out a little bit, is a huge gain. If someone was to be trading at that time, sees this pattern come here, there's so many you can see. This can be an, a shooting star, an evening star, because there is green, red, red, small red, big red, so it's an evening star. Three greens in a row, followed by this lovely hammer candle, is a beautiful um, uh, hanging man, a harami. So there's three patterns in, these, in this block here of candles. In that little zone there, there's lots of patterns. So if you caught onto that nice and early, you caught that big dip, you would keep it open most likely until you see these ones here, which more or less engulfs. It's more or less the same size, but you might see that as an exit and you get out at that point. So you buy it here, sell it there. Very, very, very nice trade. All right, let me just take you now on the last thing here on uh, binary options. This is 30 second candle, just to make a little example here of how patterns work on this as well and how by just knowing six seven eight ten candle patterns you can read the market a lot easier okay so taking it from this point up here right let's just go zoom in from here bearish engulfing clear and easy to see small green big red we see a big drop here bullish engulfing right small red bigger green market starts climbing then it's a bit of a zigzagging motion there bullish engulfing happens here again small red big green market climbs up here it peaks this one if you look at it in a way it is a shooting star uh, sorry an evening star green small red big red so the market does respect it it drops down then here's a false signal a dodgy followed by green should see the market climbing so realistically we should have seen something like that happening but it doesn't this was a false signal here with this dodgy then at this point again though once you saw this is where the, the knowledge comes in you see a dodgy you see green you might take that trade but then straight away after you see a small red you see a big red now you're thinking oh evening star okay the markets have reversed themselves so you could take this evening star trade you'd most likely lose the previous but you'd make it back on the evening star that drops down this one reverse hammer a negative signal here it gets a bit noisy again there is a engulfing a bearish a bullish engulfing so we should see again the market climbing this is the direction it's pointing us but then again evening star or almost an evening star it's definitely a bearish engulfing small green big red so this one now is telling me that the market should drop value and it does drop a little bit then dodgy buy reverse hammer this should be a negative signal to see the market drop followed by an engulfing not helpful followed by an evening star Again, loads of patterns. Look how many patterns I'm picking up, guys, in these 30 seconds. So this is the problem with binaries. There's loads and loads of patterns, so you have to be fully focused, fully attention on what you're doing, and at the same time, you have to keep an eye on your money management to make sure you're trading the right amounts, not getting carried away and making too aggressive trades. So if there's anything to pick up, we have done three webinars already on this, right? There's part one, part two, part three. Dodgies, hammers, shooting stars, morning stars, evening stars, bullish engulfings, bearish engulfings. There's a lot of stuff that we have to know to be able to say, I know how to use these candlestick patterns. And when you do know how to use them, then markets just open up. 
If you just throw in there some support resistances as well, you throw in there maybe the Fibonacci's I saw some traders mentioning on the chat a lot. There you go. you got a very, very nice way of trading. Use some very good support resistances. Use some Fibonacci's if you see a trend. A nice example for that would be if I see this massive movement from up there, the trend changes, drops here. There's the Fibonacci. This is the first one. I see the market's pulling back from it. How much does it pull back? It pulled back to the 38.2. That's where she sees resistance now on this one. Comes back down, comes back up again to the 38.2, resists again, breaking over this one, and moves back down into the general direction down. At this point here now, I can extend it even further and take it to here. Same thing, I have a new low. This was a previous low, now it's a new low further down. The pullback again on the 38.2, guys. Fibonacci works beautifully here. Pulls off it, comes down, passes, makes a new low. So I'll take it down there again, put it down to the low point. You can do it on the line down here or to here. And we're seeing the market going a little bit sideways. Now it's pulling back to the 23.6, meaning that it could pull back a bit further to touch this Fibonacci as it done before, and then maybe reverse back down, or possibly because we did see already multiple drops and lows, new lows, new highs. So one low, then a high, new low, new lower high, a newer, low down here and now a newer lower high there the previous high was up here there's a new high here we need to see where this will reverse so far it's signaling a very strong down pattern uh this was another webinar we did right fibonacci part one so if you haven't watched it and this is interesting for you definitely watch that one too guys we have loads of videos we're going to be making new videos every thursday so again we have the comment session underneath if there is something specific you guys want to see a video about let it let us know in the comments chat here our moderators are checking comments underneath i check them my team checks them so there's lots of stuff we have ready for you guys with some lo loads of strategies coming for the next month and um everything is available to you once again if you found this video useful if you liked anything of what i said including my hair Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, ring the notification bell to be notified for the upcoming webinars. They are always on Thursday, every second Thursday, the English one. The Thursday between is in Hindi. And Tuesdays we have Indonesian and Thai webinars. So everything you need regarding trading, all your trading experience and knowledge can come from us, guys. Right, let's go back now to the presentation and I think there's just one more screen after this, which is saying thank you very much, time for Q&A. And um, I'm gonna take that right now. Let me just go to the Q&A, put the full camera on. So I'm having the full camera, looking now at the questions. And Alexander's asking, uh, you trade FX or binary? Uh, both, 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 Alexander. It depends. I do a bit of everything. I normally like trading um, f Forex. Uh, I, I'm, I'm mixing things up a bit now, especially with all the stuff going on with um, the recent passing of the Queen in the UK. That has an impact on the market. All of England is in mourning still, although they have a new king now. The world is, the English speaking world at least, or the English world is in mourning of the the passing of the queen then of course the americans are i'm not sure how happy americans are with joe biden there's lots of constant going on about uh, worries of over inflation in america that could lead to the markets crashing if that does happen the big tech companies could have a big hit so i'm tr starting to more or less prepare myself for a nicely balanced portfolio where i want to have multiple options open if the markets do start dropping, then safe haven assets is something that my interest will be piqued on. Gold, oil will most likely go up again. Then um, some uh, medical companies, pharmaceutical, um, everyday usage, telecommunications are very good for balancing portfolios. And uh, safe haven currencies are very good as well for that. We do have a webinar on that one too, you guys. You can always watch that one, how to trade safe havens. Uh, so yeah, uh, binaries is my my fun. I enjoy binaries, but I do like to keep a very tight control over myself, not to get carried away with them. Okay, so let me see another question here. How to use Fibonacci for Forex? Well, that one, that one is, it's um, pretty easy, right? For Forex, um, you're just looking on a, you look, you need to use Fibonacci's for trends. So let me just go on a Forex one here. You guys should be able to see what I'm doing. I hope I didn't mess anything up. Euro USD. So let's put it on, let's say 30 minutes, zoom it out. Okay, clearly here, EURUSD, 
if I was to ask you guys and let me know in the chat, what is this? Is this a trending market or a non-trending market? Is it in a downtrend or is it in an uptrend or is it going sideways? No points for the winner because I think it's very, very obvious, right? It is clearly here a sideways market. You can see here a low, you can see a high, and the market is trending between it. Um, what I would like to do with this would not be Fibonacci. I would draw a line. That would be my resistance. This would be my support down here, a more straighter line than that. But I'll be looking for movements between. So coming up, coming down, coming up, coming down, touching in this. If I see it breaks up above this point, or even better, maybe I'll draw it there. That's a nicer one, right? So there was a bit of a fake out on this moment. So there's my resistance. Let me know what, let me just draw them in from here, not to have to do it, click it on it all the times. Graphic tools, horizontal, taking it there. Let me make it a brighter color for you guys to see it clearly. And then duplicate and draw this one in on the bottom here. And there we go, I have now my zone. If it's touching up and down in here, I would most likely be looking to place a reverse trade. If I want to make things even surer, I'd go to my indicators, I'd come into um, my uh, stochastic or stochastic oscillator or uh, RSI, my all time favorite. So I'll just take my RSI, make this one 80 to provide even more security, drop this one down to 20, apply it. There it is there. And now I would look at that moment there, for example. I'd see it touch my support line my resistance line, sorry, then I see down here, it's touching 80% on the RSI, signal me by a sell trade. This is for Forex and a sideways market. Traders can sometimes um, not like trading on uh, sideways markets because it is normally small movements, volatility is very low. I can most likely just implement a Bollinger Band on that one as well, just to show how low the volatility is. So um, just put Bollinger Bands, there we go, as it is. I, I always like to make it 20. 20 and 2 and there we can see the volatility how when the bands are tight like they are in here this means low volatility when they're opening up like here high volatility so low volatility for forex trading not the best right you're gonna maybe make small little scalping movements small little profits in that what you really want is to catch a moment like this where there's a massive drop a breakout from the bollingers and that would be a much nicer signal um answering though answering your question about let me just get rid of all of this stuff i have put in here added get rid of them these ones as well get rid of them now if i was to be finding a trending market how to use the fibonacci's in a trending market at this point here market was going a bit dro dropping i would say i can draw lines to see that the market was dropping from there and i can link it down like it is in a downwards movement but then all of a sudden looking at this moment here let me just take a actually these ones will be better for this so there's a high there's a low, there's a high, the low is on the same, and then the market starts reversing. This high is higher than that one. So now I have a reverse. I'm now thinking that the market could be going for an upwards climb. So I've identified more or less at this moment here in this area up to there that the market now might be trending upwards. So what I could do, go to my graphic tools, take a Fibonacci, draw it from there to this point here, which is the pull, and I can see a pullback touching there. Once it starts moving away again, I can identify, yeah, it is now moving in a trend. The next high is up there, the next low is there, the next high is up here, the next low is there. Now in retrospective, it's easy to see. But when you're doing that, you can identify this moment there, see the pullback and say, okay, once it pulls, touches and reverses back up, I can continue my trade. So if you did open a trade, for example, let's say you missed the first one, you missed this first moment here and you caught a trade opening once you saw the market climbing again, at this point there. So you would take your Fibonacci, not from that point, but you take it from the point here where you have the low, it pulls back to the 50, starts gaining again. You could hedge it once you see the pullback happening. So you can open your trade, let's say you opened it here. You'd hedge it once it starts dropping. You close the hedge once it reaches the bottom and starts picking up again. So you made a profit on the hedge, then it's climbing up again. Then you can extend it even further up drag it a bit, then we can see beautiful pullback here onto the 38 coming up, and it never really made it up there. I think some news must have happened here to really shake this market up because it's a massive red candle. Once that candle blows, this pattern is over, and the trend we had there is gone. This, we have to wait for this moment to pass, and after that we just saw the sideways movements. 
nice webinar, says Ukesh. Thank you, Ukesh. Uh, okay, that was a long one, and it was a long answer of a Fibonacci. Guys, if you're interested in Fibonacci's, there are two videos. Watch those videos, please. They will definitely, definitely, definitely help you. Right, let me scratch back again to presentation, back to the questions, back to the full cam, and... Uh, Right, that's it for the webinar today. We're coming close to the mark, 40 minutes and counting. Um, something for beginners. If you are a beginner to trading, you don't have an account yet, you haven't started your trading yet, I'm hoping that these webinars are helping you understand that trading is not rocket science, but it's not a walk in the park either. There's lots of things you have to learn before you can call yourself a trader and trade professionally and correctly. So if you don't have an account, there is a link in the description below. It's absolutely, of course, free of charge. You just need to sign up there, make an account with us. You'll start with your demo account with a $10,000, which can be replenished all the time. And then once you're feeling confident that you are ready to start trading, you can just deposit money in your real account and begin trading with everything you've learned from us and hopefully get off to a good start and success, lots of success. Okay, I think everything is good, very educational. Guys, I'm very happy you enjoyed it. My next webinar, like I said, is on the 29th, and it's going to be a webinar about gold. So with all the fears going on nowadays with uh, the, the massive inflation we're seeing, um, governments more or less falling on their own heels, uh, Joe Biden is terrified right now of the word um, a crash, market crash, so they're avoiding even speaking about it, but the inflation in the US is reaching crazy, crazy heights, same as in Europe. There is the massive oil prices right now, winter is coming, to quote Game of Thrones, but winter is coming towards Europe, and with the issue between European Union now and Russian, Russians not wanting to sell oil, or Europeans not wanting to buy oil, I get confused with all this politics, but that is going to have an implication as well. So we could possibly see a market going into a bit of a recession. So if that's the case, you should maybe want to watch the next video about gold to understand why gold is such a prized commodity when it comes to looking at markets in rough times. Right, that's it from me. Hope you enjoyed the webinar, guys. If you liked it, please, uh, once again, for the third time, like the video, subscribe to our channel, ring the notification bell to be notified, and leave a comment underneath. I will answer some comments if I have the time and I can. Uh, if you give me any good questions, I'll definitely answer your comments under the question sections below. So, all right, guys, we might be even having a giveaway in the next webinar, so stay tuned for the giveaways. Thank you. Thank you once again, guys, for attending, for watching, and I look forward to have you all again back next week or the week after. Next week, it's Orville. So, all right. Have a great day. Have a great trading. Bye, guys.